Hello everyone, Mrs. Fagel Fidelli here. We are going to read chapter five of Ellen Foster. There we go. When the smiling man let me and my daddy off in the yard, I thanked him for the ride and went on inside. My daddy came in the house got his keys, and left in the truck. He stayed gone until the next night, and I cannot report all he did. He missed some good food. Eating is the first thing I did after I got the suit off me, folded it up, and stuck it in a sack for Dora's mama. She had to get on home to take care of some things and would pick it up next week. I knew she would want it back. It looked clean and smelled pretty good to me. Women from the church had made pies and salads. No meat, though three jugs of sweet tea, and a greasy bag of cornbread. I ate right out of the bowls and didn't use a plate. It got late and dark outside and made up my mind to go to school the next day. Her mama died, they will say. I wore some of my mama's clothes to school. Nobody would know, just some things up under my dress. She was not that much bigger than me. I have an odd shape, but I am not ill-formed. My head is too big for the rest of me. Just this side of a defect. When I get a chest and hips, I will look weighted down. I have been waiting for them for some time now. I enjoyed wearing my mama's clothes, just so I am not in a wreck is all I thought. I went through all her things that night. The stockings, even the ones she had wore, were bent at the knee and ankle and laid flat in the drawer. I decided to wear a little something every day. That worked out fine, because the only thing I had left that fit good with socks. I could tell the teachers were dying to ask me some questions. They had took up money from the homerooms for flowers. They did not have to do that, so I thanked them. I went to the library over recess, and my teacher followed me in. She wanted me to tell her how my mama died, even though she already knew. She could tell her husband over supper about how I told her. When it came my turn to talk and tell all, I marched myself right back out of the library room and out the doors. I had liked the teacher. The only reasons for ever going to school had been to check out books and scratch her back during rest time. My fingers would smell like powder the rest of the day. She let me take up milk money because I know how to count change. Starletta was on the school steps. She is not as smart as I am, but she is more fun. That day she was rolling her socks down to pick herself. We decided to walk all the way home and not ride the bus. When I got home it was already dark and he had the lights on. I went in and did not speak to him. I did not speak to him or else I stayed outside most of the time. When they cut the lights off in the winter, I had to ask him to take me to town with some money to cut them back on. He stopped doing anything but drinking and sleeping. His two brothers, Rudolph and Ellis, came to the house and caught him laid out in the yard. They cussed him and put him in the bed, but they came back the next day when he was sober. You two are the businessmen, he said to them. I never was much into business. You do what you feel like you need to. I ain't hardly able to take care of myself, much less this farm, he said to them. So they asked him to sign everything over, and they rode to town to sign the papers. Now, my daddy said, when they brought him home and left him, now I can relax. After that, he was a free man, he kept telling his colored buddies. Each month, one of his brothers would bring him some cash money in an envelope and I would make sure I got to it before my daddy did. They left it in the mailbox. I guess because they did not think one of us was at home, I figured out what I needed and took it. You got the lights, gas to heat and cook, food, and extras. The people who sent the bills said, do not send cash, but at least I sent them the right change. I let him have the rest of the money and he would stock up so he would not have to worry. I always walked in wide circles around him. The only hard part was the food. The whole time I stayed with him, he either ate at the dinette in town or did without. I would not go to the restaurant with him because I did not want to be seen with him, that is all. I fed myself okay. I tried to make what we had at school, but I found the best deal was the plate froze with food already on it. A meat, two vegetables, and a dab of dessert. Every week the school bus driver let me off at the store and I got a ride home. I hated to see it get cold. Starletta's dad called the heat man for me and took me to town to get a coat. 
We went to the stores in Colored Town, and he got me and Starletta corduroy coats. Mine was lined with sheep fur. Starletta said it would make her sweat. I saw hers was plain. The fishman kept coming to the house, even though it got cold. He was a man named Jim, and he drove a red station wagon with scales and fish in the back and boxes of candy bars in the front seat. I bought a fish regularly, and he told me how to cook it. I bought a box of candy bars whenever my supply got low. It is best to buy in bulk. I always had him cut the heads off the fish and clean them good for me. His fish came from the fresh water, and I liked bass fish the most. I do not know how he caught the fish when the ponds froze over. I cannot feature Jim fishing Eskimo style. It got too cold for me and Starletta to play outside in the ditches. That was too bad. Her nose ran all the time. Her mama started making her stay home after school. I had to have something to do, so mostly I played catalog. I picked out the little family first, and then the house things, and the clothes, sleepwear, evening jackets for the man, pantsuits. I outfitted everybody. The mom, the dad, the cute children. Next, they got some camping equipment, a waffle iron, bedroom suits, and some toys. When they were set for the winter, I shopped ahead for the spring. I had to use an old catalog, but they had no way of knowing they were not in style. I also found the best values. The man worked in the factory, and she was a receptionist. They liked to dress up after work. I myself liked the toddlers with the fat faces. Some of the children looked too eager. Do I look like I am a leader of girls? When I got tired of the catalogs, I joined the Girl Scouts. They put me up. They put up membership drive signs at school, and it looked okay to me. There was some extra money in the envelope, so I had Starletta's daddy drive me to town to buy my uniform and accessories. She yelled and went limp on the floor when I did not buy something for her. She could not have a uniform because they do not have a colored troop in my county. They might in town. I suited myself completely. Canteen, socks, bow, bow tie, rule book, everything official. In six months, I had all the badges except swimming. I wanted the badges more than I needed to be honest, so I signed my daddy's initials saying I had made a handicraft or wrapped an ankle or whatever the badge called for. I stayed in the Girl Scouts until Christmas, and I got tired of going to the meetings. Christmas came to my house with the people drinking eggnog and decking the halls on the television set. I am glad I did not believe in Santa Claus, as my daddy liked to say, wish in one hand and spit in the other and see which one gets full first. Although I did not believe in Santa Claus, I figured I had a little something coming to me. So on Christmas Eve, I went with Starletta to the colored store and bought myself some things I had been dying for and paper to wrap them with. I knew my mama's mama was having her usual big turkey dinner that night, but that was okay because I had a turkey sliced up with dressing along with two vegetables and a dab of dessert. As long as there is a parade on the television. I got Starletta and her mama and daddy a nice spoon rest. When they were not looking, I had the sales lady wrap up the one I saw with the green chicken on it. Then I had the rest of the money for my own self. It made my heart beat fast to shop. The store was all lit up with Christmas cheer and shoppers with armloads of presents. I got two variety packs of construction paper, a plastic microscope complete with slides, a diary with a lock and key, an alarm clock, and some shoes. When I got home, I wrapped the presents and wondered if I ought to write to wrap something laying around the house for my daddy. I did not have enough paper. He did not come home that night anyway. I wrapped them at the kitchen table and hid them. When I found them the next day, I was very surprised in the spirit of Christmas. Okay, that was chapter five in Ellen Foster by Kay Gibbons. Thanks for listening.